Hello, welcome to Question Block, Secret Lost Educational Historical Podcast. I am uh, Wires of NYC, and with me is Aerialist. Uh, can I adjust your mic a little bit? Yeah. Is I have I, I have short arms, so <laughs> I'm a dinosaur. I can't. You're a dinosaur. Um, yeah. Th- today's episode is about dinosaurs, and uh, if you're just listening. Uh, to this podcast, you can go find the video on YouTube uh, at, uh, I think it's The Secret Loft YouTube. Just Google it, um, and you can see Ariel's outfit and my outfit. So I have some some uh, Jeff Goldblum-style glasses, because I am a dinosaur doctor, um, and you are dressed as a dinosaur. Yeah. Um, like one of the, the more modern dinosaurs, now that they know that they're really colorful. Yeah, and I have feathers too. So you're not just a scaly green lizard yeah. looking thing. You're a yeah. I'm a I'm a Ravisaurus Rex. You're looking like a <laughs> tropical bird. Which is fitting because birds are also <laughs> dinosaurs. Oh yeah, and and I sound like a a, a goose, right? That's what that's what geese sound like. I think that's what di- they said the dinosaurs they they Oh they honked at each other? Yeah, they just sound like birds and yeah. Dinosaurs are basically <laughs> birds. At the end. Okay, that was great. That was so fun. Yeah, big spoiler alert is that dinosaurs still roam th- the earth today, although they're not dominant because dinosaurs just became birds. Yeah. So if you have a dinosaur chicken nugget, yeah, that's wild. You're, you're really, you're, you're blowing some minds. You're, you're eating a dinosaur-shaped thing made out of dinosaur. An, ex- an extinct, I was going to say ex- existential, but an extinct, extinct. Okay. Crisis. An extinct animal. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they are, right, if birds are modern dinosaurs, then you may be thinking that, like, dinosaurs and crocodi- crocodiles are related, but they're not. What? Um, so, well, I mean, sort of, in that they're the same, like, clade, it's called, the same, like, big group of creatures. But, uh, no, dinosaurs did not evolve from crocodiles. They've always kind of, they coexisted. Uh, crocodiles just happened to make it through the extinction that killed off the dinosaurs. Crocodiles have coexisted with everyone. They've just like been waiting in there like forever, like throughout time. They're like cockroaches. <laughs> yeah, croc cockroaches. Yeah. Nice. Um, so what are we? We're gonna go through like the history of of the dinosaurs, and we're gonna talk about the cutest ones. Yeah. And we're gonna talk about some myths and stuff that you can like be annoying to your friends with that's what they're archosaurs by the way that's what like crocodiles and dinosaurs and birds are all part of this family i think they're anyway, archaeologists the archosaurs <laughs> um yeah so so primarily we're gonna talk about the mesozoic era um so there have been since the the evolution of complex life if you think life is complex now um yeah a half billion years ago so about 500 million ish years ago there was the Cambrian explosion and prior to that it was just a bunch of like algae mats and single cell organisms floating around what in the exploded? oceans. What exploded? So life. It's called the Cambrian what? explosion just because like suddenly over just millions of years a very short geologic time scale you had this yeah explosion of different life forms and species. Prior to that the 4.5 billion years previous Everything was very boring. Um, so this is starting before the dinosaurs, but it's setting the scene. So basically, starting a half billion years ago, uh, you get all these cool species, animals that develop eyes, that learn to like, you know, that walk, that swim, that do all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, what we today consider to be animals, right? Like pet, basically pets. You didn't have anything that would be cool enough to be a pet until 500 million years ago. Okay. So... Um. Then there are, there's three uh, geologic ages since then, right? So we're in the third latest one, and we're going to talk about the middle one, which is the Mesozoic era. So it's 250 million years ago to 66 million years ago, and that is known as like the age of the dinosaurs, also the age of the coniferous, because coniferous like trees and forests were kind of the uh, dominant uh, thing. Pine fresh. <laughs> And we will along the way talk about other animals were doing cool stuff while the dinosaurs were ruling the earth, but dinosaurs were the dominant ones, and they're the coolest. So we'll mostly talk about dinosaurs. 
So, uh, yeah, the way, I guess, the Mesozoic era, it starts 250 million years ago. Uh, basically, all of Siberia erupted in a giant freaking volcano. A giant freaking volcano. Yeah, so that's called the, the end Permian extinction. So the era before the Mesozoic started was the Permian. Um, and so the, it's like half of all species died out during the Permian extinction because just absolutely massive volcanoes kept going off for 2 million years. Uh, and so the oceans became really acidic and it was very hard to breathe and everything really sucked. Uh, so a bunch of stuff died. And then it took uh, like 10 or 20 million years for like life to like basically like get over, get past that. Um, but it left a big opening with all these sort of uh, crocodile-like or like pretty large mammals also. And then also dinosaurs evolving alongside them. But the dinosaurs weren't dominant yet. So this is the Triassic period, um, right. the beginning of the Mesozoic. And then this time there's one continent and two oceans. Yeah, so this is the time of Pangea. That's so cool. You could just like visit your friends like wherever. You could just like walk wherever you wanted. Yeah, the earth was also a lot warmer then, so there were also a lot of inland seas. So there, like sea levels were just higher. There was less land, more, more sea. And a lot of like, there were a lot of lakes basically, or just like, I don't know, lots of seas. So everyone lived in New York. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Basically that. There um, were a lot of mollusks. So you would not have liked it because you would have been allergic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could not. A lot of seafood mollusks. around that time. And there, yeah. were, there were a lot of just kind of yeah, slow moving reptiles. So if you time traveled back to that era, you'd probably be fine as long as you like look before you cross the forest or whatever, because there were ambush predators. But for the most part, reptiles can't run long distances, so you'd you'd be able to hunt them pretty easily. Wait, were there trees? at this time but there weren't like were there ferns and trees and there stuff? weren't there weren't flowers like right. flowering plants didn't evolve I, yeah yet. Those correct come in those are traffic. like way 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 later but were there like trees and stuff yeah okay there so were there trees. were so yeah and lots of conifers oh so there were like pine cones it was christmas you were christmas in new york setting the scene and there were all the dinosaurs looked like anoles basically they, yeah things were little, pretty like little anoles well some of them were big there were like big crocodile-ish not, looking stuff. Not till later, though. You're right, but the not dinosaurs that evolved were small. Yeah. So what makes a dinosaur different from like a crocodile or a reptile? They, so the only thing, there's only one, because scientists are like hella confused right now because, yeah, they, they keep find they keep like reclassifying the dinosaurs. So the only thing that scientists can all agree on upon that, um, dinosaurs all have in common that makes them unique is they all have a complete hole in their hip socket that's like it. that's it <laughs> that's <laughs> that is dinosaur. it yeah um and in the some of the stuff that we'll talk about is like you know and this might not even be a dinosaur it's like a lot of that happening especially now because of it's mostly because of computer programs yeah because they can use i guess like neural networks to classify stuff yep and then this just also is they, they keep completing the fossil record. So they'll find that what they thought was a unique species was just like a juvenile of some other species. Or an example is that like uh, Trodon. What? Tro- it's like tro- Trodon. Trodon. T-R-O-O-D-O-N is like uh, a widely regarded like s- very small small dinosaur with like serrated teeth. Uh, and it. Yeah, its classification has changed like dozens of times over the last century. So yeah. Then, oh, you're gonna talk about the Bone Wars. Oh, later. I was I was gonna say because of the Bone Wars, mm-hmm. a lot of, that's that's why the fossil record keeps having to be updated because that there were like these, the the great dinosaur rush. <laughs> there were these two guys, um, named Edward and Othaniel, and they uh they faked a lot of dinosaur findings. So nice. they messed up the fossil record like super, super bad. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So, okay. So Triassic, right? We're going through Triassic period. So there's like little anole dinosaurs, right? Mm-hmm. And then... Yeah, so the, the first true dinosaurs arose sometime between 240, 230 million years ago. And they're... There are, di- there are other animals that are called dinosauromorphs, 
which are sort of the cousins of dinosaurs that are not actual dinosaurs, which again, fossils, it's hard to, hard to read a fossil record, I guess. Yeah. So, and there's, uh, there's the Hariosaurus and the Oraptor are like the, the late Triassic, the, the main, the main boys okay. or girls or theys, you know, who's to say, yeah, yeah. who's to say. But they're kind of like, they're kind of just like a basic diet. They're like a crocodile. They To me, they look like a crocodile. They look sort of like the raptors in Jurassic Mixed. Mi- it looks like a crocodile mixed with, it's like all of the dinosaurs. Crocodile, like a, a, an inkling of like a longer neck, but like not really. And then the, like a T-Rex-ish body and like rhinoceros claws. And and it's walking in the it, it walked in the water because I guess the water was like everywhere so yeah yeah so, so, they, they, so they were yeah and the Earth was like a sauna at that point so it was very warm there was more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and there were no ice caps so the forest extended like all the way to the North and South Pole oh wow and there was just one large landmass Pangaea um, so that's like yeah the Triassic is in a super interesting period for dinosaurs because they really took center stage in the Jurassic, which is the next period. So the... Wait, some of them took center stage. I'd say the vegan dinosaurs took center stage in the Jurassic. Sure. Okay, yeah. Not like my favorites, which are the the rave dinosaurs, which come later. Oh, bird dinosaurs. Yeah, bird dinos come later in the like all, But like, I feel like all the cool ones, all the like pretty ones, all the model, all the look... The look queens of the dinosaur kingdom come in the uh, Cretaceous. Yeah, and like the Stegosaurus. Like, well, this is cool okay. One. Jurassic. This is Jurassic. Comes in Jurassic. Yeah. So we're talking Jurassic. So what what made us go to the Jurassic? Yeah. So Triassic lasts two hundred fifty million to two hundred million years ago, and then Pangaea split. Uh, what? So it was plate tectonics, right? Pangaea Broke split up. into what Laurasia. Uh, there's one of them, and I forget the other one. Hi, Asia. In South America. <laughs> but basically, the Atlantic formed. Um, and as you can imagine, when your giant landmass of Pangaea splits, there's lots of volcanic eruptions and more like, I guess, catastrophic climate change. Uh, and so pretty much killed off all the the dinosauromorphs, the like reptiles that were sort of like dinosaurs, didn't survive. But the dinosaurs did. And so the dinosaurs then took over the ecological niche of all the other like large animals. So that's why Jurassic Jurassic Park, good name for the park. They just include some Cretaceous era dinosaurs. But yeah. I mean, yeah, that's that's not a big mistake. I mean, that's that's like yeah. Isn't there some statistic that's like we're closer to we're closer to we're like closer to Tyrannosaurus Rex and Tyrannosaurus Rex is to Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus. So yeah, that's a pretty big mistake. Well, yes, the fact that they had Stegosaurus is and well, they were Jurassic dinosaurs. The fact they had a T Rex in Jurassic Park was a real oh wait, but they just mistake. They just like had eggs though, so they could have had eggs from like all the different periods, right? Yeah, they just picked a name for it. It's not a scientifically wait, but is because movie. okay, hang on. When people get mad. <laughs> When people get mad about Jurassic Park, who gets and mad about Jurassic Park? A lot, of, a lot of people are mad about. It. They they throw shit. They they're subtle about it. They're like some movies. They're like a lot of in, in you know it's, some movies. I don't understand. Um, a lot of pseudo paleontologists on YouTube. So they they just had like dinosaur eggs. So it really could have been they just had a mixture of them, right? Yeah. And they just chose to name the park that. Yes. Okay. All right. That's uh, uh, Dr. Grant says that in the movie Jurassic Park. He's like, yeah, th- and like Ellie Sattler or whatever. She's like, you have you have plants that are like toxic, like that are poisonous to them. Oh, and that's Grant's right. Grant's like, half of these dinosaurs didn't live during the Jurassic. Okay. All yeah, right. Yeah, and I think Hammond is like, it's marketing. We spared no expense. Oh, Taken care of. All right, so people can stop being upset about this. <laughs> yeah, I think the movie acknowledges it, that like that's sort of part of the point of it. Oh, is that it's like made by a guy who's into marketing. The land masses are L- Laurasia and Gondwana. Nice. Yes. So the, this period had the first amphibians, the ancestors of frogs and salamanders, and it also had like s- some cool swordfish-looking 
like the ichthyosaurus, which means fish lizard, because saurus saurus means lizard. So mm-hmm. and ichthy is like the study of fish. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, dinosaur being just a total misnomer anyway, right? It's Latin for a thunder lizard. Ter- terrible lizard. A terrible lizard. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, you've got a picture here of like what the trees look like. There are a lot of ferns. The Jurassic is like all about the ferns. And there's a <laughs> and monkey. There's a monkey puzzle tree. Dude. Yeah. So what? Uh, tell us some of the species that that like kind of evolved during the Jurassic. So the sauropods, which are like the long neck ones. Yeah, the long boys. The long boys. <laughs> so, so the dinosaurs. It's. I mean, yeah. There, there's nothing comparable today. But imagine if you anywhere you went on Earth, like dinosaurs were like the dominant species in like every ecological niche, um, which is pretty wild. Yeah, so there's the the long neck boys that ate plants, and the um, theropods, which are they're like the meat eating, but they're like small meat e- eaters. And then also Archaeopteryx, which is um you know the, it's a really great like outdoor clothing company. Mm-hmm. They had their origins in this period as well. Archaeopteryx is also the the most famous fossil. Really? Yeah, we can talk about it. Um, well, we should because that's, like, that's it's in it's in this period of time of dinosaur time. Let me pull my my little reference. Um, you've probably seen the picture of this that the logo of that company is like uh, a reproduction of this like this famous yeah. fossil. It's basically like it looks like a bird skeleton doing like a dip or like a a dab. It's like, you know, it's like wings, like over. It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> um, so uh, the first Archaeopteryx discovered, found in 1861, is is the most famous fossil ever, probably. And it came at the exact right time, providing dramatic evidence for the theory of evolution. Because you look at it, and it clearly looks like sort of a lizard with wings. Um, so this blew everyone's mind. And so, right, this is... In 1861, it's like the origin of species has just been published, uh, and like the theory of evolution is like an ongoing debate at the time. Um, and this is like a very striking uh, animal that's like looks like a kind of in between creature, sort of a a bird, snake, fish, lizard thing. So in this period, too, the dinosaur, like the sauropods, got they got really big, they got really really big, like right. That was Jurassic. Yeah. That's when, like, the big, the biggest of the big boys lived. Yeah. The, so. I ha- guess the trees were just really tall, and they evolved to just. But how did they, they get so big? And why did they get so big? Oh, why did dinosaurs get so big? Yeah, because they were so big. Yeah, so um, dinosaurs have really unique and, like, pretty cool, I guess, physiology. So they're. Right, we said that they evolved into birds, and they actually have a lot of the characteristics of birds. So, uh, dinosaurs have um, they have like basically semi hollow bones, and they have air sacs within their bones. So they they also have the same lungs that birds do. So unlike us, where we just breathe in and breathe out, uh, their lungs basically are able to pull oxygen out of the air both when they inhale and exhale. So they have like more efficient lungs than we do. Uh, and so the, the theory is that, like, much like birds, right, like, birds have a super high metabolism, which lets them do really high energy things like fly. Um, the dinosaurs were kind of developed the same way. They could, like, grow very quickly and get very large. Um, and then while they were, like, really huge, uh, I guess they weren't necessarily, like, super heavy because they had, like, semi-hollow bones. So the... Brontosauruses and stuff, they, or the Brachiosaurus, they weren't that heavy? Weren't they, like, tons and tons no, I, of... I think relative to, like, how... Sorry, they weren't, like, super dense, I guess, right? Okay. Relative they to, were like... Lean. Relative to how big they are, um, they weren't necessarily <laughs> as heavy as you would think. So they had a lot of muscle, and they were able to support their massive weight. 
also like if you look at how a brachiosaurus is built it looks like you know its legs are just these big pillars um it is neat that they they're pretty sure like right the brachiosaurus like they didn't have giant babies even though they were that big and same with like t-rex and these other like you know dinosaurs that like grew to the size of a school bus their babies were still like guinea pig sized they were like tiny yeah so it says that the i'm looking at like how big they were there's like a little like chart of of how big the different dinosaurs were yeah. in comparison to a human and the brachiosaurus is a hundred well th this one is an Odipodupus. it's an Ar Odipus. argentinosaurus is right. like the the really big one and uh, it, it could get up to 110 feet. Yeah. Another thing they're not, uh, like the paleo, I guess, yeah, paleontologists aren't totally sure about is it seems like there are very few mid-sized dinosaurs. So the dinosaurs, like, there's a, a real, like, gap in the fossils that they find. So they're either, like, uh, very small, like the compies, um, where they're, like, cat size or chicken size or whatever, or they're, like, you know, T-Rex size or bigger, or like Stegosaurus size. And they're not sure why there aren't more, whereas, like, mammals that are found in the fossil record have, like, a whole nice diverse range of sizes. Um, and they're not really sure why. I guess the theory is that, like, the juvenile dinosaurs maybe, like, filled in the role of, like, mid-sized dinosaurs. <laughs> juvenile. Yeah. You a juvenile you dinosaur. Know, you a juvenile dino. There's also Stegosaurus. Right, the Stegosaurus, is, which we can talk about. They, their, uh, the name of their tail is actually named after a Far Side comic. Is it the Stegosaurus or the Ankylosaurus? Well, it, the sp a spiky tail basically spiky tail. is called a, a Thagomizer because there's a Far Side comic where there's like some cavemen giving a presentation, <laughs> and they're like, "This is what I call the Thagomizer," and scientists are nerds. So they, they were like, you know what? That's a really great name. Yeah, they love that joke. Yeah. But a, a lot of scientists don't know what the, the spikes do for certain. There's certain like species of dinosaur where they're not really sure what the spikes did. The, the spiky tail was definitely for like defense, but there are some plates that seem like softer, and a lot of scientists think that now that those were used to sort of attract mates. Oh, really? Yeah. Because there, there are some where they're just like, okay, that doesn't look like it could really be used as a weapon. Yeah. Oh, so it's mm -hmm. for showing off. Yeah. Well, that's what they think. They also, scientists aren't sure how dinosaurs had sex. They have, they have guesses. But... They're not really sure I'm what they're like. Surprised they haven't found a fossil of like two their dinosaurs butthole? going, oh. going <laughs> at it. Yeah, they uh, yeah, they're trying to figure out like was it more like birds or more like snakes or like lizards, basically. Yeah, let's see. I'm trying to see other other cool dinosaurs of this period. I mean, really. So like the late Jurassic. Yeah, the late Jurassic period. Well, there's there's mammals, mammals are in play with the dinosaurs in the late Jurassic period. Like mammals have fully realized themselves, and they are out. They are out to play. Like a lot of shrews and like, um, yeah, just like shrew like creatures are hanging out. Oh, there's tiny mammals running around yeah. in the shadows of the dinosaurs. Yes. Yeah. Um, run us through some of the. Some of the species, I guess. Oh, we, we just like shrews. I mean, it. shrews. Oh, the, and they now. I think the first we didn't say this about Archaeopteryx. The first uh, drawings of it had it with like leathery bat-like wings, but now they think that it had feathers. They think it just looked like a bird. <laughs> so it actually doesn't make it as exciting <laughs> nice. to me, you know, because it before before they were like, oh, it's like a little dragon. <laughs> yeah. So just. To name some dinosaurs, right? There's like the meat eating theropods, like Dilophosaurus, which has the double mohawk crest. Oh, yeah. So th that thing was 20 feet long. Whoa. Yeah, so much larger than any of the like Triassic 
carnivores. Uh, they were plant-eating ornithischians. Ornithischians, which means bird, bird-like. Bird-like hips. Yes. So the hips. Yeah. Well, okay, so we're going to talk about, I guess at the end, this is the carrot that we can dangle because the dinosaur family tree has been like reworked. Massively. Ma- like it's it's crazy. But right now we'll just continue. We'll just continue on with this. But the main categorization was like, do they have a backwards pelvis or like a upright pelvis? So are they bird-like or lizard-like? The ornithischians and the... So the theropods got moved over to the ornithischian side of the tree before they were. Yeah, we'll talk about that at the end because it'll it'll make things okay confusing if we do it so now. The, um, yeah. So anyway, plant eating ornithischians were th- some of them were covered in armor. So Scutellosaurus. 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 Yeah. So they lay they those were like the forerunners, and they gave rise to the familiar ankylosaurs. And the backplated stegosaurs, and then there were small, fast-moving, um, and they think they were om- omnivores. These little, small ornithischians, like the Heterodontosaurus and the Lesothosaurus, and they would eventually produce like the horned and duck-billed dinosaurs. Oh yeah, the ones with the with the with the lip injections. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and why, I'm like, why are they gonna draw them? Like, their lips are so big. I'm like, what is up? Do they find fossils of the lips or I like? I don't think so because I don't think the tissue survives the fossil record. Did, did dinosaurs? It's just like an artist rendering. Did dinosaurs, did dinosaurs have lips? Have lips? <laughs> they don't know. Area of active scholarly research. Do they want lips? Depends what you need them for. Um, Do you think they had lips or not? Do you think a dinosaur could give you a kiss if it wanted to? I don't know. I don't know enough about them. Wh- what Despite do you think? Despite being a dinosaur doctor. Um, but no, given that birds don't have lips and dinosaurs evolved into birds, probably not. Oh, yeah, that's true. I guess in the way that like a, a rhino, I yeah. I guess they more had beaks. Yeah. So then, uh, yeah, so you get into the late Jurassic, and then there was no uh, giant natural disaster that marked the end of the Jurassic and the start of the Cretaceous. It's just sort of like a bookkeeping thing, that they're, they're like two different eras. So the Cretaceous is starts 140 million years ago uh, and runs until 66 million years ago. And T-Rex doesn't show up until right at the end. Um, T-Rex was one of the, like... Yeah, last last dinosaurs to to evolve, but became super dominant in just a couple of million years it was around. So in the Cretaceous period, Africa detaches from South America, and there's a seaway in between North and South Atlantic oceans. Mm-hmm. So that opens up the trade. Dinosaurs <laughs> can now start trading. <laughs> well, no, they couldn't because it wasn't one large landmass, right? So like, right. Pangaea had fully split off. And so the dinosaurs actually then evolved sort of differently between like the the Eurasian dinosaurs and the dinosaurs in the Americas. The dinosaur, the American dinosaur. I mean, they're. I think there's like they still there's still the land bridge between like. Well, I'm not totally sure between like the Bering Strait land bridge or not, but there I know there are both like there are T-Rex fossils like there's tons of them in China, and there's also tons of them in Montana. Okay, do you think that they're faking them? You think they're just like No, I think there's like real. a factory that's like they're like I okay. They're real. Um, let's 3D print. Yeah, so what's what are like the key factors of this this time period? Well, what happens in the Cretaceous? So you can just you can kind of track it among different how different lineages keep evolving. So like the sauropods stop being as dominant. They evolve into the titanosaurs. But they fill like a smaller niche. They're not as diverse for whatever reason. And then uh, flying evolves and flowering plants evolve. This is why this is my period. Oh, okay. Yeah. The Cretaceous is, is your most. Because I fly. Your favorite part of the Mesozoic. I'm, I'm beautiful like a flower. I like to smell flowers. <laughs> By the way, as an aside, during the Cretaceous is also when um, like insects start developing like colony behavior. 
So it was the first like uh, Beyonce the, with her beehive. Yeah, the first beehives were are found in like termite nests and stuff. So like insect colonies evolve, and so for certain like evolutionary biologists, that's actually more interesting than the dinosaurs. Like evolving like fins or flippers or long neck is cool, but evolving an entirely new method of social organization is can be even more exciting. All right. So what else? What else is going on? So now you've got like full forest going on. You've got actual leaves. Yeah. Developing. Does this mean what's the weather like? Like, do I need a jacket? Is it? I think it's still pretty, pretty hot. It wasn't like as warm as the Jurassic, but the Earth was still pretty warm. Why did flowers like? Because oh, I know why. Wait, can I guess? What? I think I know why. Because if there was a big continent, the supercontinent, right? everything's next to each other so you don't need to like travel to mate if you're like a plant you can just like whatever but now that everything's like far away and there's flying um creatures that can like eat the seeds of your flower and spread it possibly you had the sauropods who were eating like stuff that was growing in trees then i don't know i don't know why flowers were like oh maybe it's because the sauropods like started to die out and so the, so the flowers, had to, the flowers had to were step like, it up. hey, what's up, birds? Or they were like, yo, there's birds now, so they can take us. Mm. They want to see the world, the plants. Yeah. They're also, by the way, like in, in the beginning of the Cretaceous, there was no grass. Like grass hadn't evolved yet. That doesn't come until like the end of the Cretaceous period. So That's like so funny. What you think of it, yeah, when you think of like, oh, nature, it must have been these rolling grasslands or whatever. It's like, no, that wasn't what was a it? plant. Lots dirt? and lots of forests, I think. Just like dirt, wood just, chips. Just no, just endless like dinosaur like poop. Tr- endless <laughs> trees. There just weren't fields. That wasn't a thing. The wor- the world was probably just made of dinosaur poop. Cause like, can you imagine? Can you? This is like my misinformation on this podcast. Come on. I mean, I don't know. Made sense to me. Who's who's to say? Like we really don't know that much. I just want to make the point that grass didn't evolve until later. Okay. So yeah, when did birds develop? I mean, they've been like they've been developing, but this is really when they they started to break away from. Di- they they started to evolve from a common ornith- ornithischian dinosaur. Mm-hmm. I mean, they are dinosaurs, but they started to like move away. Um, and then flying dinosaurs develop, so it, they, yeah. They well, like they Archaeopteryx was in the stage before. Oh, okay. Yeah, but Archaeopteryx, I don't think f- flew necessarily. It was like a glider. Oh, it glided. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, they they evolved from from gliders to full flying. And also pterosaurs, which are not dinosaurs, <laughs> or yeah, they're just called they're pterosaurs. They're not. Yeah. They're not pterodactyls. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pterosaurs evolved and then pterodactyls, which are not dinosaurs. Um, yes. Surprise, surprise. Pterodactyls, not a dinosaur. Mm-hmm. Did you know that? Yes. Yes, I did. Let's see. What was going on in the oceans? Th- so a lot of creatures that people think today are the Loch Ness Monster like mm-hmm. yeah they the mosasaur so Mosa? mosasaur mosasaur yeah. is moseying along it's the largest of the cretaceous um ocean animals yeah i guess it, to me it looks like a manatee with it's got giant teeth a manatee with like one of those ugly fish that mm-hmm. like lives deep in the ocean head that that's what this creature looks like yeah yeah, and then you get, I guess, still small mammals, but you get some more modern mammals. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. If I saw one of the, it looks like a mouse that's, like, extra pointy, basically. <laughs> if I saw one of those, like, like in our house or something, I would freak out. Because it's so pointy. Yeah. Let's see. And also, so dinosaurs with feathers really start popping off at this time as well oh i wanted one other point about the wings though yeah um which is really funny is that wings from the fossil record wings first evolved in dinosaurs that were too big to fly so they're like 
there's a theory that they were originally developed for display purposes or for mating. Right? And they, uh, kind of, I guess, recent development, they looked at, uh, yeah, they found some like really well-preserved dinosaur wings. And uh, they were able to study them. And they, they saw what are basically like pigment cells. They're called melan melan melanocytes. Melanosomes. Oh, melanosomes. Melanosomes. So they had tons of different melanosomes, mm -hmm. which correspond to like very bright pigments and lots of colors. So like, oh, they, this like dinosaur had like rainbow, cool rainbow wings. Um, but it's like, yeah, it would be in dinosaurs that were too like bulky and ungainly. Like they couldn't have flown. They clearly were like, were running around on like two legs. So it's almost like by quirk of evolution, the dinosaurs developed wings for display and then some dinosaurs, I guess, figured it out or like realized they could glide on them. And then that like led to flying dinosaurs. Yeah. And evolution in is crazy. The f in the fossil record, they also found these little like goose goosebumps in the fossils. And that's how they knew they, they were like attachments for the feathers to go. Mm -hmm. And they said that that some of the feathers would be attached like to their bones. Right, because that's that's why the bones would have like little bumps on it, which is different than a bird which has like feathers attached more to its skin. Yeah. So can I? I'll read this this quick little passage from the rise and fall of the dinosaurs. This is pretty neat. So it says, "The more fossils we find, particularly in Liaoning." I guess which is an area in China where yeah. like, they're finding lots of these finding so like, many winged fossils. The more complex the story gets, the, er, the early development of flight appears to have been chaotic. There is no orderly progression, no long evolutionary march, in which one subgroup of dinosaurs were, was refined into ever better aeronauts. Instead, evolution had produced a general type of dinosaur, small, feathered, winged, fast-growing, efficient breathing that had all of the attributes needed to start flying around in the air. Uh, there seems to have been a zone on the dinosaur family tree where this type of animal had free reign to experiment. Flight probably evolved many times in parallel, as different species of these dinosaurs found themselves generating lift from their wings as they leapt from the ground, scurried up trees, or jumped between branches. Oh, so, that's so cute. Oh, yeah, there's like this this little guy. The Microraptor? Um, it's the Epidic, Epidix Terex, and okay. it, <laughs> it just looks so crazy. It looks like a stick bug. But yeah, this is a, that's like a little glider. <laughs> it's so funny. That might be what I, I am as a dinosaur, because it looks so ridiculous. Yeah. So what is it? Troodontid. Uh, also had wings and a body light enough that it it might have been able to fly or glide. But then I think Troodontid now is there's like they've realized they thought it was several species, then they said it was one species, and now it's like multiple species again. <laughs> they can't make up their minds. They there keep has finding to new fossils, you know. Yeah. Do yeah, I was I was I heard that like right now there's going to be still a lot more fossil like finds, but then it will eventually slow down. Oh, and okay. then we'll run out of fossils. We'll, we'll run out of fossils. Yeah. We'll have to make new ones. That's what that's why I'm like I feel like they're making new fossils and just depositing them in the earth. I don't know. But yeah, it seems like Montana, China, and there's one other place where they're like finding a ton of fossils right now. Yeah, they it's like they find it's something crazy. They find like at least one new species a day, I think, I heard. Or even by I recall. Yeah. So should we talk about some dinosaur myths? Yeah, we well do you want to finish the oh. we can finish the chronological this, summary. Yeah. So what happened to the dinosaurs? Um is that the it's the like end of the what is it, the Cretaceous um, yeah. e extinction event. There's which, a, a giant meteorite. Yeah, they're pretty sure it was caused by a giant meteor right hitting Earth uh in the Chicks Kalub crater it's called which is basically uh in the gulf of mexico it's like a huge a huge part of like the yucatan peninsula 
So yeah, like where like Tulum is. Oh wow, that's that's crazy. Is it still there? So the evidence they found for it's like it's absolutely huge. Like, I think tens of miles wide or something. Um, but I think they can you can see it in like certain satellite imagery or doing certain kinds of scans of like the bedrock. But like in sixty six million years, obviously like the soil has pulled back in and it you know got covered in you know is covered in forests or whatever. Um, yeah, so this this is like a right the the meteor impact killed obviously anything anywhere close to it, um, and then the shock wave killed anything within like a couple hundred miles probably, and then uh, it threw like massive amounts of like dirt and rock into the air, and so I think it caused this like global winter that probably lasted I forget exactly how long a long time long enough to kill off pretty much all the dinosaurs. And then what emerged from that? Birds? Chickens? Oh, and the entire surface of the earth became an oven. It was like hundreds of degrees also. A lot of a lot of bread was baked, a lot of seafood. There was a lot of seafood happening. Um because of all the sea, the uh, sea creatures that existed. Yeah, so th- there is also in this Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs is like a great kind of summary of like basically like one of the worst days on earth. Um, because it like then created hurricanes and like these these insane winds and stuff um, and just like yeah it was like an atomic bomb going off but orders of magnitude bigger so just any like all the forests like caught on fire that were nearby but yeah bad times um, and so like yeah it also set off a bunch of volcanoes so even like in India on the other side of the planet like volcanoes started going off um, so anyway. Some of the, yeah, the dinosaurs did not last, did not make it through. But those that had, like, I guess a handful did, and they then became birds. Um, but, yeah, there are no dinosaurs around today, and that was pretty much the end of them. And so we can talk a bit, yeah, we'll talk about dinosaur myths now, and we can talk a bit about T-Rex. Who's Ooh. probably the best known dinosaur. But the least known dinosaur. <laughs> the least known dinosaur. <laughs> the most misunderstood. Yeah, so... So let's talk about, I guess, T. Rex first. Okay. Um. So, T. Re- let's let's clear up some stuff. So, T. Rex, did it have feathers? Um. Or scales? It did not have scales. It had like what they would call like proto feathers. So it didn't have like bird feathers like what you would think of, because uh, those hadn't evolved yet. But it, it had, had fluff. Yeah, like fluff. It looks almost baby bird. So- sort of like a baby bird. <gasps> yeah. So cute. Um, they, they're pretty sure T-Rexes were pack animals, and so they would hunt in pack, which is insane, right? Could you imagine multiple T-Rexes coming after you? Um, or, like, juveniles would hunt with, like, adults, um, so they would go and, like, corner other dinosaurs. Um, They'd be like, hey, what are you doing here? T-Rex did have short arms, but they weren't useless. They were, they're always drawn (laughs) very, like, puny, but they think they actually, like, the bones were pretty small. But they're really muscular, and that when the like T Rex use it is like once it it would like kind of pin another dinosaur, <laughs> punch it, right? And it had claws on the arms too. Yeah, so it would like punch it and kind of rip at it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The the bite of T Rex is like, yeah, it had like right insanely strong, powerful jaws. Uh, its teeth were like several inches and like super sharp. So it and it had like an incredibly strong neck. So it was. It was, like, the cruelest, like, most badass killing machine. So, like, once it bit something, it could, like, crunch all the way through the bones and then, like, with its neck just, like, rip something apart. Um, Wow. It really was, like, brutal. That's so metal. (laughs) It's just, like, blood. Dinosaur blood. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, So, yeah, a a baby, a baby fluff, vicious... And then, uh, oh, would they have uh, good or bad eyesight? So yeah, they there's yeah, uh, contra Jurassic Park, they have good eyesight, um, because they were a predator, so it makes sense, right? They have good eyesight, and they definitely could see things, uh, even if they weren't moving. So in Jurassic Park, they just like hold still, it's like his vision's based on movement, <laughs> and it's like no, they could they could definitely see you, um, and they. 
Yeah, they weren't like totally stupid. They had right like pack animal behavior. Do you um, know how they know about the vision? Uh, based on like the eye socket. Yeah, they found some fossil of, of the eye socket, and there was like an imprint of the muscle or something. And they were like, "Oh yeah." Yeah, they've also analyzed their brain a lot too, or, or like the brain case for a bunch of dinosaurs, um, because they find, yeah, with a lot of dinosaurs, they've they've like now come to right. They were not totally stupid, but like I think T Rex, they said it's like they were probably smarter, like a little smarter than a dog. Um, and dogs are pretty smart. Yeah, you can teach them tricks. <laughs> you can teach them tricks. You, you probably teach could, T Rex to could teach uh, a, a T Rex tricks to sit. Yeah, so they weren't total, like, dumb, lumbering animals. One of the reasons they thought that is because their brains are small relative to their body size. But it's all about the crenellations in the brain. Yes, it's about the crenellations and their neural connections. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of like... It's not about the hardware, it's about the software. Mm-hmm. There you go. So, were they cold or warm-blooded? Just all dinosaur, like, in general? Because um, previously thought they were all... Cold blooded, yeah. But actually, they're warm blooded, right? Or is it like a mix? They don't know. This it's such a roundabout thing, but they're like they definitely were some dinosaurs that were not hundred percent cold blooded. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and a lot of this is because their the eggs were grown at temperatures higher than the surrounding environment, so it's like. Oh, so the dinosaur must have they been They must have, like, been warming the eggs. Yeah, or just, <laughs> they just breathe on the eggs. Oh, the I guess, eggs. and their downy feathers. Yeah. Which would indicate they were, like, keeping in their body heat or whatever. So they, yeah, now they think they were warm-blooded? They think they had different kinds of bloodedness. So okay. there's one that's really funny that's, like, it's called, like, gigantothermy, and it's basically, like, the, the really big sauropods, like the long neck boys. They think they might have kept warm be- by literally burning fermented plant materials in their stomach, like a little furnace in there. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm like, I kind of feel like that's like, scientists are like super going out on a limb. Like they're like, but what if? <laughs> Prove me wrong, bro. <laughs> yeah. So you talked about the colors of them, right? Yeah. So a lot of, yeah, they, they can figure out if dinosaurs had, like, black, brown, um, red, white. Like, those are pigment cells that they can they can trace a little bit better than, like, other colors. And, yeah, because there's this one dinosaur that had, like, zebra stripes on its wings and a red, a red like, head. Maybe that's you. No. Yeah. I'm um, sorry. I, I came across more of my notes on the 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 than, bloodedness. Uh, no, the asteroid. Oh or, uh, well, we're talking the, about myths okay, right now. Okay, we already moved on. <laughs> we talking about myths? We we myth busting. So, do dinosaurs live in the land, the sea, and the air? All those places. Um, well, we said that they flew. They mostly lived on land. And then I don't think any actually lived in the sea, did they? That's correct. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of, a lot of dinosaurs that are related to ancestors that came from the sea. Like Mosasaurus or whatever. Exactly. But now they think that there aren't any that really lived in the water. And I think we said on a... I forget which episode previously, right? Whales evolved from a land animal that like went back into the sea. Yeah. Whales evolved from like a horse-like thing, which is pretty crazy. Oh yeah, and then we talked about the the pterosaurs and the pterodactyls, right? And again, the thing that separates the ter- pterodactyl. Are we even using pterodactyl anymore? Like a. I th- I think a pterodactyl is a a species of pterosaur. Okay, so, so yeah, terad- it's just that they don't have that hole through the hip bone. So, like, that's what counts them out. Yeah, they've got their huge wings, but they're not really running around on two legs very much. And that came from the the bone wars, I believe. The um, 
it's just these these guys like digging up bones and like naming them left and right yeah during the the dinosaur like gold rush i guess yes and there's when did that happen is that like late 1800s or is that like in the yeah late 1800s you got it nice yeah what charles marsh and edward drinker cope yeah and their rivalry and yeah. I think they each worked for like universities, right? They, these were all sponsored by either museums or universities. Yeah. Um, which is funny that they then proceeded to do like real crappy science. The fir- yeah, the first fossil ever found was the guy thought it was a person's like leg bone. He's like there must have been giant humans. Oh yeah, I think that was an early theory. <laughs> yeah. Well, because he he looked at an ele- he's like, yo, someone get me like an elephant leg bone. And he compared and he was like, okay, this is not it. So the only other option is uh, giant humans. It's so funny. Oh, yeah. And then there's the whole like, are Triceratops a thing or not? Like that also came from the Bone Wars. Remember, like, for for a moment, scientists were like, "Oh, are Triceratops just the a younger, like they, they couldn't find like an old Triceratops, mm-hmm. so they didn't think that Triceratops were like a real creature." Yeah, there also is a theory that, uh, like mythological stories of griffins. Um, I don't know if this has been like was later disproven, but was was based on people in the middle east seeing triceratops skeletons because i guess there are some areas that coincide with like early human civilizations where there were tons of triceratops skeletons triceratops are cool because they have a beak like a bird and they have hooves so they're like clomping around like horses almost um but anyway the the theory is that because a, a triceratops skeleton has the distinctive beak but has like a a body that looks more like a lizard or whatever, or maybe like a lion or whatever. That's where like a griffin, which has the head of a bird and the body of like a lion. But they think that they were from. triceratops. Yeah, they were triceratops skeletons. Well, so yeah, they for like a moment, everyone was like, no, they're just a taurus. They're a taurosaurus. Like they're a young taurosaurus, and oh. then because they couldn't find any old, they were like, wait, there's only like young quote unquote like triceratops and then they were like oh the um taurosaur taurosaurs when they're older they lose one of their horns so they were like okay the triceratops are basically just juvenile taurosaurs and people were so like upset by that that they were like fine we'll just say that we'll just rename the taurosaurs triceratops okay yeah got it you get what happened like because they're basically we're talking about like two people thought there were two separate species of but that was wrong right what is that true or that's not true yeah that it's true but they they just renamed oh triceratops is a young taurosaurus but they now renamed taurosaurus triceratops okay yeah okay and but that was because of but they the, look the same. They still have like they horns. look the same. That's it's not like that big of a deal. But to scientists and like I guess people whose favorite dinosaur is Triceratops, it was a really big deal. <laughs> people were very upset about it. It was kind of like Pluto, you know. So should we talk about the family tree? Yeah, we'll talk about the family tree. Let me give you more meteor facts real quick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> it was the size of uh, Mount Everest. So it was six miles. The meteor or the, the crater? Me- the meteor itself was six miles. The crater is 100 miles. And it created winds of, of like 600 miles an hour when it landed. So like, right, Hurricane Katrina was 175 miles an hour. So like, yeah, 600 mile per hour winds. So yeah pretty wild and then it basically like all over north and south america it rained down basically like molten rock for like several hours afterwards yeah and so, the dinosaurs so bad, cried bad times and then uh, they died yeah and it heated up to like a, a is it because they degrees. burned or because like the sun got blacked out or what 
Depends where you were on the. They didn't have an umbrella. Planet. If you were within six hundred miles of the impact, uh, yeah, you were you were just hit by like. Yeah, you you were pretty much burned. Like it, any vegetation <gasps> within six hundred miles, like caught on fire. <gasps> I bet the whole earth smelled like chicken. Yeah, probably. I guess so. <laughs> like chicken nuggets. Yeah, so the only <laughs> things that survived were like, you know, burrowing like mammals that could go in their holes or whatever, or maybe some other like you know lizards and stuff. What about the yeah. flying ones? They just fly away. Unless you had like a good nest to hide into, no. Because like there still was a six hundred mile per hour wind. <laughs> it just blows the ter- there's like a pterosaur and it's just like ah! <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so can we talk about this family tree? Yeah, so so how did what led to them actually like changing it? So there's this guy named Matthew Barron. Mm-hmm. He really threw a wrench into everything. Yeah, so you had your lizard-hipped Ceretians, which included the meat-eating theropods like T. rex, and the sauropods. Like right. The, lo- the long-necked boys, like brontosaurus. So they were seeing basically T. rex and brontosauruses were relatives, and then or- ornithischians, which are like the, the triceratops. triceratops which then turned into to the you know the bird like hip ones. That guy's like out on its own branch, just mm-hmm. hanging out, right? So that was like yeah. the classic tree, and this was for a hundred and thirty years. That's what everyone believed. So this Atlantic article says it's like somebody telling you that cats and and yeah. are actually dogs. Neither cats nor dogs are what you thought they were, and some of the animals you've been calling cats are actually well, dogs. Yeah, it would be like if if someone was like, "Oh, did you know a leopard is actually a dog?" Sure. Like the relative, you know. Yeah. Or a wolf is actually a cat. <laughs> so they revised it because by moving. So I okay. The I can tell you what ha- yeah they they what this guy did is he entered all the species into a computer. And then the computer recategorized as you do. them. As you do. As you do. The computer recategorized them. Okay. So the way now what it has, you can see, is that they changed they started calling the sauropodomorphs instead of sauropods. Right? So that's like your brontosaurus. And those are the Ceritians. They're on their own branch now. Now this mm-hmm. family tree says that the theropods and the ornithischians, which is like T. rex and triceratops, th- they are related now. So I think that kind of makes sense a little also from the standpoint of what we've just gone through with the history of like when different species were dominant, right? So like the giant sauropods, the big brontosauruses and stuff, were dominant during the Jurassic and late Jurassic. And then during the Cretaceous, the like the theropods and the the other more like uh, the Triceratops or whatever were dominant. So like T-Rexes all T-Rexes did hunt Triceratops. That is accurate. I think that's in one of the Jurassic Park movies. It's in one of the Lost Worlds. Oh yeah. Ooh, uh, myths too. Velociraptors. 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 Yeah. What about them? So in Jurassic Park, they're like big, right? Yeah. Jurassic Park made them much bigger than they actually are. They're- Ooh. They're really, they're really like turkey size. They actually probably look like turkeys, <laughs> but cute, cuter than turkeys. Yeah, they. I think they were pretty smart. Probably not as smart as as they are in Jurassic Park, where they're like opening doors and stuff. They're doing Rubik's cubes. <laughs> yeah, but uh, pretty smart. They did have claws. That part is right, and I think they hunted in packs, so that's probably also accurate. But yeah, they just weren't as big, and. Unlike in, what was that? Like, uh, what was the new Jurassic Park movie? I don't know. The That's one? They, like, started the reboot, right? Anyway, in that one, there's, like, a pack of raptors takes on a, a T-Rex-like dinosaur. And, like, that would never happen. Wh- how come? They're too scared? They're not brave? Yeah. The, no, yeah, raptors aren't going to bring down, like, a giant, like, a T-Rex, right? You, like, you run from that because they're just, like, huge. What ate the T-Rex, or they just died? They just died of old age, I think. They were just, like, were at the top of the food chain. They died of old Um, age. Yeah, no, raptors would hunt smaller stuff. 
or I think they were scavengers possibly too. They would just maybe yeah, they would eat like a dead T Rex if it like died of natural causes or something. Yeah, I think the sauropods could live they were like, you know, the tortoises of the uh the sauropods lived for like really long time and I, I think the T Rex T Rex only lived to like thirty. I think that was their they had a short a short, exciting life. Of T Rexes? Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. Like, the slower you are, the f- the longer you live. Yeah, whereas T-Rex had to eat, like, an enormous quantity of food. They were because like... Because it was a bird. It they were like, like a bird. I work all the time. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm busy. It's just work, work, work. Gigs, gigs, gigs. <laughs> and they grew so fast, too. They Dinosaurs had, a, like, a short adolescence. And since they were born the size of, like, guinea pigs and, like, quickly so had to grow to, like, oh a my school God. bus, uh, they had to eat, like... I forget what the stat was. It's like close to 100 pounds of food a day or something to like get a T-Rex up to full size is like what they calculated. That's so crazy. Yeah. So anyway, according to the Rise and Fall of Dinosaurs, they, they make the argument, the realization that birds are dinosaurs is probably the single most important fact ever discovered by dinosaur paleontologists. Who discovered, dinosaur doctors who discovered it. Um, I did. Let me skim. Let me skim <laughs> that's the here. other. That's the other shocking I, fact. I think Archaeopteryx was like a a clue because they were like, "This is a dinosaur with fe- with feathers, right?" So they were like, "Wait, this looks like a bird." Yeah. <laughs> but wait, wait a second. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, I'm it was a. Uh, yeah, kind of throughout the seventies. Um, Ostrom. What a radical period. Ostrom is the guy's name. And I guess Huxley, who was like a much older paleontologist, originally had the theory, but he like couldn't prove it. They were like, prove it, bro. And he was like, I can't. I'm just going to die now. And yeah. then this new guy was like, I got you, bro. Yeah. yeah. This guy, Ostrom, who is using fossils that he found out in Montana. Oh, right near where your grandma used to live. Oh, and then he, he preached the dinosaur-bird connection and the new image of dinosaurs as warm-blooded, big-brained evolutionary success stories to the public with the Scientific American cover story in 1975 and a wildly successful book in the 1980s, The Dinosaur Heresies. The Dinosaur Her That's so dramatic. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, what an exciting time to be a paleontologist. The 70s, free love, bird, bird dinosaurs, anything is possible. Yeah, I wanted to look at like some really funny looking ones. In the, yeah, I have a book, a children's book. You have like a grown up book with no pictures. I have like a children's book of dinosaurs here. Um, no, I just have I have nice black and white drawings at the start of every chapter, but that's about it. Oh yeah, it is cool how the art evolved. Like, if you look back at like older dinosaur paleo art. Yeah. The dinosaurs are very like slow lumbering like stupid creatures, right? That's true. Yeah. Or I guess the very first dinosaur art they're very scary. Yes, they they were first drawn as just like monsters and then they drew them as big lumbering reptiles basically. Yeah. And then you know, now now it's just diverse. Yeah, I have a cool rendering of an Archaeopteryx. In my book for whatever reason it looks like the dinosaurs are yelling in like all the, all the drawings of them. Oh yeah, they Okay, ah! they should we uh, play like what they sounded like? Because it's really funny. Yeah, do you have it? I if you got it. Yes. Oh, because they reconstructed a, a uh, the larynx. They, they found printed, a like, larynx. A, oh, they found a larynx. Okay. They found one, and then they just they blew through it. <laughs> they. Were, do you want to? Yeah, play it. I can find it. I'm gonna pull it up. Can you talk about a fact of something? Um. We've gone through almost all of my facts, unfortunately. Let's see. Because you had a lot of stuff when you were, you were reading this book. You were, like, telling me all this stuff. What about the logarithmic history? Do you want to give, like, some perspective? Oh, I'll find, uh, I'll find one of the articles on there. No, on. well, just talk about, like, the perspective. Like, let's say, let's say all of history is one year. Were, like, how were the dinosaurs in that year? Like, how many months are they? 
Oh, so the, well, if it's a logarithmic history, you've got your dinosaurs in March and April. And then, like, we're, we're humans. Um, yeah, and we've talked about that, right? That we're closer to Tyrannosaurus Rex. We just, yeah, we said it at the Rex beginning. Is to Stegosaurus. Um, if you were a dinosaur, what you features would you... I am, but yeah. I'm trying to give you something to talk about while I find it. I can't do two things at once. All right, you you look for that. I am, I. Yeah, I am. I'm looking for it. Okay. But I can't also talk while I look for it. So. Um, I suppose we can talk about. Let's see, we've talked about the Jurassic. We've talked about the histories. Um, we can talk about another evolutionary innovation that happened. This is at the end of the Triassic, start of the Jurassic. Um, so. The ancestors of Amborella, a rare shrub, found in the wild only in New Caledonia, split off from other angiosperms, uh, which are the ancestors of all other flowering plants. So there's like a plant out there that lives in Australia that split from all the other plants uh, like 200 million years ago. Which That's pretty crazy. Neat. I don't, I don't know why it did that. Apparently, one of the ex extinctions was actually caused by a plant. Like, it was be caused by, like, the plant producing a lot of, like... Oh, the algae maps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back yeah. during the, like, Devonian or, or thereabouts. Yeah, or the... I forget it was the, the algae maps or, like, the cyanobacteria. Uh, but they, like... I think they just lived off, like, sulfur or something, but they, they produced tons of, I guess, CO2. Yeah. And, and, then, ca and then caused a mass, ex mass extinction. Yes. Um, yeah, I'll tell more about like that Griffin story. Okay. Um, so the right, all the fossils and everything we've talked about, and we keep talking about how the the record like changes and gets updated over time. Um, so the Victorians really did like kick off a lot of dinosaur hunting. Right, the Great Age of Dinosaur Discovery began almost two hundred years ago, and it primarily was the Victorians. Um. But many of the, there is a theory, uh, and there's this book called The First Fossil Hunters. There's a theory that the, a lot of the monsters of ancient Greek and Roman myth were based on the discovery of the bones of extinct species. So there's a theory that the, the uh, fossils of mammoths, which are like, right, this is like post-dinosaur era, but the fossils of mammoths inspired the legend of the Cyclops. Yeah. Uh, and there's the theory that griffins... Uh, were sup they're supposed to be supposedly four-legged birds with feathers, wings, eagle beaks, and clawed feet. Uh, the legendary homeland of the Griffins was ex explored in 1922 uh, by Ray Chapman Andrews, who discovered abundant remains of protoceratops along with dinosaur eggs. And so the resemblance between Griffins and Triceratops is very striking. That's the theory. Um, we can also, do you know... I don't know that Triassic is necessarily named for anything. Do you know what Jurassic is named after? No. The, the Jura Mountains is a, a mountain range on the French-Swiss border, uh, which is where they first discovered like the rocks that mark the boundary between like those geologic eras. Like on the side of a cliff or something, they were like, "Oh, the rocks change here. Something like, you know, must have happened between these two eras, which I guess was Pangaea splitting and a bunch of volcanoes going off." So Jurassic is named after the, the Jura Mountains. And do you know what Cretaceous is named after? No. What is Cretaceous? So the Latin word uh, creta, C-R-E-T-A, means chalk. And so a lot of chalk was like, we've, I think we, on our Oceans episode, we talked about chalk is like a huge component of chalk is the like fossilized remains of like microscopic animals. And they're like, the calcium in their shells is like that's what makes up layers of chalk. So a lot of that was deposited during the Cretaceous. Oh wow! So there you go. So like the the chalk cliffs at like the cliffs of Dover or whatever in the British Channel or whatever that's from like the Cretaceous period. That's so great. Okay, okay I think I found the sound. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to cut out like the guy talking. Turn it up. Let's hear. Let's hear this dinosaur sing. Yeah, so this was the that like little 
um, pointy thing on the top of the duckbill dinosaur, like on his head. That made a noise? Yeah. Oh, it's so quiet. Yeah, I don't know. There it is. Okay. Sounds like a conch shell. <laughs> so that was like the duckbill guy. And then... Okay. That's a pretty cool noise to make. Yeah. You call your friends. It's a, Yeah, it totally sounds like a conch shell. And then I think the... um. Yeah, just the other dino like dinosaurs didn't roar. Um, but they did just sound like geese and ducks. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, so maybe this. It's it's funny because like all these like sound clips, they have a scientist talking for like ten ten years and then the sound clip is like fifteen seconds. That's why it's so funny. So if you were a dinosaur, what kind of dinosaur would you be? Um, I still think the raptors are pretty cool. It'd be cool to glide. I mean, I think being a T-Rex is probably the most fun because you're just a, like a killing machine. Um, so probably one of those two. How about you? Yeah, I think I, w I think I would also be a raptor. I think iguanodons are cool looking. I don't even know if, yeah. Because they've got like the sail on their back. Yeah, I'm. There is a. I know there's one in this dinosaur book that I really liked, that was like so colorful. I'm, I'm looking for it. I know that we. Um, oh, the the Claudiopteryx. Mm. Look at it. It's like, <laughs> it's kind of patriotic. Which I mean, I'm not really, but it's like. Oh yeah, that's a cool. They've drawn it as red, white, and blue. Yeah. It looks like an ostrich though. It's even got like the backward legs. I would definitely have feathers though. For sure. For sure. Oh right, the the first Yeah, so we can talk about what happened after the dinosaurs. Well, that's just life, right? <laughs> yeah, so like one of the fossils that's like that they found is like three million years after the asteroid hit is this, like, puppy-sized creature called Torehonia. And it, like, it's one of the oldest primates, which means it's a cousin of ours. Um, and so, it, like, you can you can envision it kind of, it looks cute, but you can envision it, like, sort of leaping through the trees and clinging to branches. Um, so, yeah, that's what kind of evolved and filled the niche after the dinosaurs. And then you had other giant mammals, like whales and mammoths, and later on, the evolution. Oh, of Ice horses. Age, the movie Ice Age. Oh, that's another myth, right? There weren't dinosaurs in Ice Age, right? So that movie's wrong. Yeah, there were not because do they have dinosaurs in in the movie? Oh, Ice maybe Age? I don't know. I haven't seen it. I don't remember. Actually, I don't think they do. But I think just yeah, mammoths. There's no, no dinosaurs there. No people and dinosaurs existed. I don't know if you know know this, but like just they, saying, humans and dinosaurs did not coexist. Uh, yeah, modern humans evolved about two million years ago. We missed out. Oh yeah, here's a the 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 name dinosaur first appeared in 1842. Okay. Sir Richard Owen. He realized that there are these. So people were just calling them um, Megalosaurus, <laughs> just giant. Okay. That's the one that that guy thought was like a, a that uh, Robert Plot lizard. thought was like a giant human, uh -huh. right? And then, um, yeah, there, this guy Richard was like, "Hey, I think these are all related." And then he he put them in in the family dinosaurs, the category dinosaurs. Category is dinosaurs. I guess that right as they said that probably was for ancient cultures that led to like maybe that's why the Norse had all their myths about giants. And maybe that's why the Greeks had myths about, like, the Cyclops and the Titans or whatever. Because, like, if they found these giant bones, uh, what else would they, you know, they'd have to come up with something. 
anything else on dinosaurs? Um, I think that covers it. We've just got a lot of myths. And it sounds like there's a dinosaur outside I right now. I think we've summed it all up. We talked about what they sounded like, what they looked like. They probably smelled pretty bad. Um, but I think that about covers it. Oh, yeah. They probably did. Yeah, the the meat eaters, though, like, they were probably, their breath was probably okay because they just ate meat. So, because, like, you don't get that much tooth decay. <laughs> from from meat. Okay. Yeah. But the, the sauropods, they probably smelled really bad but they were so high up you couldn't you wouldn't smell them so it's okay <laughs> yeah i think that covers it Great yeah job. okay I'll dinosaurs i'll play us out oh so if you like this the best way to support us is tell your friends leave a five-star review um give it a like subscribe <laughs> Give us a cool, cool comment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll be back next week with another topic. What is this um, music, by the way? This is the Jurassic Park theme oh, yeah, remix. Is it?